Hey guys, it's Raymond, a math person. Today I'll be going over what continuity correction is. So, continuity correction is just when you apply a normal or normal approximation or a central limit theorem to a discrete function, and that's because when it's um because that's because normal approximation is using con continue is assuming that it's continuous while the discrete variable is. <laughs> I mean, obviously it's discrete. Let me just do an example to like better demonstrate this. So let me just draw an example real quick. So let's say this is our normal approximation, and this is our discrete function. It would look like this. Since it's discrete, it's going to be like boxes. And for example, this value right here might be n. Or let me just use more concrete. Like This might be a value, let's say 5, right? So this in the discrete case, this whole thing right here is the probability of 5. And if I say probability that x is less than 5, that means we're look actually looking at this probability right here, right? We're looking at this probability before 5. So, but in the um, continuous case, 5 might be this value right here, right? And so we're actually adding this extra part that is not there when we just look at x is less than 5. So then that's one of the reasons why you just, so that's one of the reasons why we just proved this one right here. Um, we add, um, we subtract n, let's say if, it, if n is 5, then we start from um, probability x is less than 4.5. It's just that 0.5 is just there as a buffer to make that approximation a little bit more accurate. And this again is just used when it's a discrete function and you're using normal approximation. I hope that kind of makes sense. So like by taking that point, um, 0.5, that might, um, this area right, right here might not be exactly 0.5, but that just helps to approximate a little bit more accurately. So by taking this 0.5 off, you're actually, you're now better looking at this part right here. Like similar, similarly, if you're looking at when probability is x is less than or equal to 5, so that means um, it includes 5, right? So that means we're actually looking at, in a discrete case, we're looking at this whole thing, because since this whole thing is 5, and we're looking at this value here. But then if we just look at probability of x is less than or equal to 5, in the continuous case, we're just only looking at this part right here. So by adding that 0.5, by adding that, by looking at it from 5.5, in the continuous case, we're better able to approximate a little bit better. Does that kind of make sense? And we can do the same for the other side too. So this is my normal approximation, and this is my discrete data right here. And let's say this is some n right here. So if I say, what's the probability that x is greater than n in the discrete case, that's talking about this part right here, right? n is greater than some n. But in in the continuous, ca continuous case, n might be some value right here. So when I say the probability of x is greater than n, that takes into consideration this whole part right here. So how do we fix, fix this problem? Okay, so what we do is we just add some 0.5 to the green. So we add n plus 0.5. So then that shifts our green approximation over a little bit to our yellow approximation. So it's better able to approximate a little bit better. And likewise, we can say the same. So this x is greater than n is equal to. In the discrete case, we just have to add plus 0.5. Likewise, if this is my normal approximation, and this is my variable, and we're looking at probability that x is greater than or equal to n. So that, so and let's say this is n as n again. So that means we're looking at including n, right, like that. But then again, in the um in the continuous case, it might n just might be this value right here, not this whole area. So by when I say x is greater than or equal to n, in the continuous case, we're just looking at this part. So that's one of the reasons why we subtract 0.5 and minus 0.5 so we can actually take into consideration the purple part right here so I guess this is 0.5 so again this is just a method to better approximate the normal approximation and this is called a continuity correction okay let's just do an example so it's a little bit better in our head and again this sources right here this diagram is from I'll link the source down below it is not my diagram so copyright to them but no one really cares about my videos so it's okay so an urn contains two white marbles and and eight blue marbles okay a marble is drawn from the urn 100 times in succession without replacement 
So that means, and then what is, which is the following, is the closest probability of drawing more than 75 red marbles. Okay, well, we know that um, 75, 100 um, trials is pretty a lot, right? So we can assume this is normal approximation. We can take, um, usually we can use normal approximation when the trial is greater than about like 25. That's a pretty good rule of thumb. So we know we, we know we can use a normal approximation. Okay, so that means we need m. What's the mu? That's just equal to one eighth. Wait, wait. so what's the probability of um, red? Probability of red is equal to eight out of ten, right? Because probability of y is two out of ten. Okay, so the the mean is just equal to mean of red in a hundred trials is just n times p. That's a hundred times. 8 over 10, which is equal to 80. Likewise, the standard deviation of red would just be equal to square root of npq, which is equal to square root of 100 times n times p, which is 8 out of 10, times q, which is 2 out of 10. This is equal to 4. Okay, so we have all the ingredients we need. And we're looking for the probability that x is greater than 75. We can normalize this. X minus mean over standard deviation is greater than 75 minus 80 over 4. All right. But again, we would have to normalize it, right? So for X is greater than 75 in the discrete case, because again, marbles, we can't have like 0.5 of a marble. Or I guess you can, but you don't really want to pull that out of an um, urn. <laughs> so we know that this is a discrete case and for x is greater than n we can use we can use this formula right here so we can add 0.5 so that's 75.5 so let me actually place that in there minus mu minus mean which is our 80 okay so let me plug that into my calculator okay so this is our definition of z so that's that z is greater than negative 1.125 so that's what we're looking for we're looking for if this is negative 1.125 we're looking for z, when z is greater than that part okay that's not too bad let me pull up my value 1.125 so they're saying that on the positive side when it's 1.125 this area right here is 0 0.8708 i think so then the part we're looking for which is greater than 1.125 right here, we'll have the same area. So our answer is just 0 0.8708, or approximately, because it's, again, normal approximation. It's not exact. So that's what we have. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Bye!